Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lucia and this is Lulu's Leaves. In today's video, I want to go through and talk to you guys about some of the most difficult plants I've ever taken care of. And I want to mention, I'm being pretty dramatic when I say that, a lot of these plants have just been difficult for me, but they have been some of the harder plants to take care of. So maybe keep that in mind if you are looking for some easy care plants. These guys that I'm about to show you may not be the best choices, but that doesn't mean that you are necessarily going to have the same issues as I did. So take this with a grain of salt. If you're not struggling with this plant, I applaud you, but don't take me too seriously. This is just my personal opinion. Before we do get into the video though, if you guys are not already subscribed, definitely click that button down below. Also give this video a thumbs up, and if you want to be entered into the $20 Amazon gift card giveaway, don't forget to also leave a comment down below and that will secure your entry. With all of that being said though, let's just get straight on into my top five difficult house plants. So I'm going to start off with one that I thought I had under control and then it decided, no, not today. <laughs> and then went back into kind of a dark period and now it's thriving-ish again but it's definitely one that was more difficult, so I do want to include it. I know a lot of people have had struggles with this plant too, so let me just show you. We've got to move this VGI over here. <laughs> the first plant that has been pretty difficult for me is the Monstera Thai Constellation. This is a really beautiful plant with some amazing variegation. It looks like a constellation. That is where the name comes from but you can see it's got some yellowing on the leaves. It also has some brown that looks like it could be thrips, but it's not. It's been there since I got it and I haven't spotted a single thrip on the plant. So yeah, that is not the struggle that I have had with this plant though. It's been more about the root system. And as you guys know, I am all about the root system. I really don't care about leaves. It really comes down to what is under the soil or in the substrate. And now we do have some roots going on, which is really promising, but we also did struggle for a really long time with rot. These plants are really super susceptible to rot, so if you have a heavy hand in terms of watering, this plant might not be the best one for you, but it's also a plant that you can't keep dry for too long, or you can also risk root rot. I successfully rooted this plant in moss and perlite and it was doing really really well. It had a really nice big juicy root but I forgot to water it and those roots started to rot and once the root started to rot I think I moved it over to perlite and then we started getting some stem rot which is still kind of happening but I have seemed to keep it under control I think once the newest leaf starts putting out some aerial roots, I am going to actually propagate it so that I don't run the risk of that rot spreading and killing the rest of the plant. I think that this bottom part where there is that rot is just kind of going to die eventually, but hopefully I can keep it long enough so that there can be a little bit more space between the nodes there and I can make a chop. But yeah, if you do struggle with overwatering or root rot in general, this might not be the best plant for you because it is so prone to root rot. But yeah, don't let that deter you completely. They are a beautiful plant and they're not hard to take care of if they're not giving you root issues. But I have heard from a lot of different people that they do struggle with root rot. I actually forgot to mention before I started the video that all of these plants are actually different genuses, which is really great because we do get a nice variety. Um, so yeah, the next plant is a Hoya. This guy here is the Hoya imbricata. This one is actually doing a lot better now, but I did want to mention some of the struggles that I did have. So it has finally pushed out a second leaf that you can see right there in the bottom, but 
This plant did not do anything for me for a year and it was in really high humidity so I'm not sure exactly what the issue was. Finally it did decide to push out a new leaf once I gave it really really high light and higher humidity again but these guys are not going to grow and thrive for you unless you have them in about 90 plus humidity. They grow really slowly and they grow really funky too if you don't take proper care of them. And that doesn't mean that I don't love this plant because I really do. I think it's such a cool little taco, <laughs> but it is definitely one of the more difficult plants that I have taken care of and it hasn't died on me, which is really nice, but it also hasn't done anything for me, which is kind of a requirement for my plants. If they don't do anything for me, they're not doing it for me, if you know what I mean. So keep that in mind if you do want this plant. It is very, very beautiful, but it probably won't grow for the first little bit unless it's already growing when it comes to you. Next up on this list is one that actually surprised me in terms of how difficult it would be. It might be partially me, but I don't know. It's just given me a lot of issues and I hope that those issues are in the past because we're getting some new growth here, but who knows? I will keep you guys updated, but this here is my Syngonium Pink Splash. This guy here has had a lot of yellowing leaves lately and you can see that these leaves here are also getting chlorotic. So I'm not sure exactly what is going on, but it does seem to really like a lot of water. If you're someone who likes to go away for weekends or someone who likes to go away for even longer than that, when it's not a global pandemic, um, this might not be the best plant for you because it does need constant watering. I find even as an indoor plant, this plant needs to be watered every three to four days. And if it's not watered, it will lose a leaf. And that leaf isn't necessarily going to be the bottom leaf. I did check up on the roots, the roots are fine. So this is definitely a watering issue. It is also getting enough light. So that is not the problem. It does really all come back to how much water I'm giving it. And because I didn't take my own advice and I got a lot of Syngoniums, really, really quickly. I am struggling with them a little bit in terms of watering because most of my plants are philodendrons and they are a lot more drought tolerant than these guys. They have really, really thin leaves. So it means that if you forget to water them, they're a little bit worse off than their philodendron cousins and anthurium cousins. <laughs> so just keep that in mind basically for any Syngonium. There are some that are a little bit easier and if you have them in a larger pot, they're also going to be a little bit easier, but I also don't recommend putting a small plant in a huge pot. So just keep that in mind. Sorry if the light is changing a bunch here. I have a tree that's waving in and out of the sun, but this next plant is probably one you guys would expect to be a little bit more difficult. This is my pitcher plant, which has no pitchers right now, but I have actually been able to keep it alive, which is new for me because carnivorous plants are pretty difficult to keep happy. They all require distilled water if you want to keep them the happiest, but I am just watering this one with tap water because that is all that I have access to at the moment. And it's doing okay, but it's not producing pitchers. You really do have to keep this plant moist at all times or it will dry out and kill off any pitchers that it does have. If you purchase this plant for the pitchers, which we all do, just keep in mind that they likely will not stay unless they are in a really high humidity situation and they're also being fed distilled water. This guy is actually really beautiful to look at even without the pitchers. I actually really like how it's more of an upright plant spread out from the center in all different directions. I do like that in this plant, but it is a lot more difficult than some others to take care of and it's more high maintenance. So if you like easy care plants, this is really not one for you. So I first wanna let you know that this plant is actually not the plant that was giving me trouble, but I did wanna mention this plant because it does give a lot of people trouble, especially in a smaller size. This here is the Philodendron Melanochrysum. Sorry, it's having a fight with the VCI behind me. This plant has actually been really easy for me, but I did have some in the past 
that grew really horribly for me and it's just because they really like high humidity especially when they are pushing out new leaves you need to have that plant in constant humidity or the leaves will rip or the petiole will snap there just needs to be some sort of lubrication to be honest with this plant when it is growing so if you can't provide high humidity for this plant it is probably not the best one for you but what you can do to prevent the ripping of leaves is to spray them when they're coming out of the sheath that is a really important thing with this one i'm telling you they rip so so easily especially when they're small these guys have a little bit thicker leaves, so it's a little bit easier, but they're definitely not one of the easiest plants I have ever taken care of. I do prefer keeping them in moss if that's helpful. I know that a lot of people keep them in soil, but moss seems to help keep that humidity high. But again, you have to keep on top of watering that moss because if it's extra dry, it's actually going to be worse than soil. So yeah, just keep that in mind if you're looking to purchase a melanochrysum. It's not necessarily to say that you can't take care of it, but it does prefer high humidity for sure. All right guys, well that is going to be it for today's video. I'm sorry it was a little bit shorter, but I did wanna get something out for you guys. So yeah, let me know if you enjoyed it by giving this video a thumbs up. And if you want to enter the giveaway for a $20 Amazon gift card, don't forget to subscribe and comment down below as well to be entered. But yeah, that's going to be all for this video. I really hope you guys did enjoy it. Leave me some recommendations down below for some other videos that you want to see. But that's going to be all. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys next time.